Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with, if I could choose only one work by Composer X, it would have to be work C. Well, Composer X is Corn Gold. Yay, Corn Gold, who's really made such a comeback now that film music has been considered decent and worthy of notice. He was such a genius as a composer. He really was. He was the greatest prodigy since Mozart and Mendelssohn, probably. And his output is divided into two big chunks. There was his pre-movie stuff and his post-movie stuff. But now we're beginning to realize that they're not as divided as you think because he used themes from his pre-movie stuff in his movie stuff. And his post-movie stuff, his concert works, are really perfectly marvelous as they stand. His operas have been making a comeback, especially Die Tote Stadt, and to a certain extent, Der Wunder des Helian. I mean, and things like that. They're, they're big, juicy, decadent hunks of post-romantic schlog. And I love them. I really love them. But the work that we need to choose, well, we have to come up with one, don't we? It's tempting to pick a film score, it really is, because his film scores are amazing works, and they're written to be heard continuously. They work if you play them continuously. You know, he, he composed them so that the music fits together away from the film. He regarded them as his sort of, he called them, you know, operas without words or something like that. But they are. They're dramatic and they're gorgeous. And, you know, the Korngold sound became the sound of Hollywood's golden age. And it wasn't the sound of Hollywood's golden age being Korngold. He invented it, more or less. Of course, now we see a lot of other composers like Max Steiner and, you know, who are who are really equally important. But but they didn't get quite the cachet because Korngold was very, very meticulous about doing his his film scoring, just as he was with everything. And, uh, and it shows. The craftsmanship really shows. And I, I'm always amazed when I listen to film scores, as I've said so many times before, at how much attention composers lavished on creating fabulous music, 90% of which was never going to be heard, or that might be cut, or that might be rearranged. But it's still, they cared. They, were, they, they cared. And Korngold cared. However, the work in question, typical of Korngold, that I can present to the god Kankrazans, is the Violin Concerto. And there's a, there's a really very good reason for it. First of all, it is absolutely one of the most beautiful pieces of late romantic, kitschy, melody, gorgeousness you'll ever hear in your life. It is just gorgeous. Second of all, it contains a lot of tunes from his film scores. Therefore, I can say to the god Kankrasans, do not destroy everything by Cornwall except this. These tunes come from larger works. We need to hear those larger works. They have to be preserved. Fortunately, they're in films. They may be preserved anyway if the films are preserved. But, you know, who knows what evil gods have in their mind. I mean, he might, like, destroy just the soundtrack to the film. And wouldn't that just suck? So, yeah, the Violin Concerto, it's absolutely wonderful. It's been recorded like it's become a repertory piece. I remember, I remember when I was first listening to it, you know, there were, there were no recordings. There was the high fits, which was the gold standard because it was written for high fits, but it wasn't a great recording sonically. And then there was, there was, I think Ulf Holscher did it for, with Kempa or something like that for um, EMI. And that was the only other one. And then finally, the digital era, Perlman did it, which was a big deal. And now everybody's doing it. And as Anne-Sophie Mutter said, she said, it's a little bit kitsch. No, but it's so beautiful. And it is. And it opens with a tune from an absolutely dreadful film called Another Dawn. That do, 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 ba, da, 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 da. Oh, gosh, it's the most wonderful tune. Thank God he salvaged it from that dreadful movie. And the finale is mostly the prince and the pauper. Do do da 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 ba 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 da da da. Oh, it's just it's just great, absolutely great, and it deserves enormous attention and all of the love that's been lavished on it. And Korngold, you know, he was only fifty when he died. So did his son George. They were the same age. It was really kind of scary. 
Um, he was he was quite young. He was at the peak of his form. I mean, he was at the peak of his form in the womb, but he was really at peak form in these late concert works, the symphony, the symphonic serenade, the violin concerto. They're masterly and fantastic and well worth hearing. And oh my goodness, I know that the violin concerto is going to get the job done. I just know it. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.